Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4, Mega Man Zero Four. In the last part, we defeated the first two Mavericks, and now we're continuing on with the next two, and a bit more after that, actually. Now, first off, we're going to again Bloom Stage. This is the first one that I actually have to change the weather in order to get the EX skill that I encountered. Uh, you might, depending on the route you go, you may have to do that a couple times, but with me, I only have to do it two or three times, I believe. Now the thing is with this stage is that uh, the, the the impact because uh, like I mentioned before the <coughs> the weather also has an effect on the level. <coughs> this is the first one that immediately comes to mind whenever I think of what changes with the level. The, uh, with uh, Fenry or Luna Edge, the wolf we took on the last part, he may get icy, but his stage gets icy, but it's not that much more dangerous. This one can be actually be rather ta dangerous if you're not careful with it. But, and this is also the first stage that we've encountered that has a fairly long mini-boss. I probably should have fast-forwarded it, but I decided not to. Now the thing is, a lot of these guys, like, like I mentioned, like, ah, uh, I'm saying like too much. A lot of the enemies in a lot, in the majority of the levels actually do have Z-Knuckle weapons, but the thing is, if you play like I do, they're pretty useless. Because I never use the Z knuckle, or rather, I. Well, actually, that's not true. The, the first really useful weapons in this stage, but it's not until the second half. And now we have this mini boss, which has far too much health. Yeah. He anyway, he shoots out those lasers every now and then. He'll every now and then he'll shoot out this uh, tornado, which will uh, have wind blowing in the direction that you're not in, I believe. Yeah, it's the one that you're not in. Like right now, it's pulling me to the right because I'm at the left of the tornado. So watch out for that, and uh, that's pretty much all this guy does. Every now and then he'll also uh, fly across the screen, which can be fairly annoying to dodge, but he's not that bad overall. Just be careful because his hitbox is a bit bigger than he than, than you'd think. I still think he has far too much health, though. And with that, we're in the second half of the stage, which has a giant laser. I'm a fire in my reference. And the thing is with this stage, with this part, as it's pretty obvious, the laser will fire every time after every time the screen, the stage blinks red. And this is also the first stage I know of that we have gotten to that you can get a serotanium uh, chip in. By the way, the Fightel, those guys, the one like I just got chip of, the guy directly to the right of me actually ha is the guy that has a really useful weapon to me. But getting to one can be kind of time consuming. Also, directly to the right of here, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, is where the first Serotanium chip is. Serotanium parts chips are extremely rare, they'll respawn when you re-enter the level, but they're still hard to find, and they're really worth it, because they're used to make a lot of useful stuff. And now we have the most useful, well, one of the most useful weapons in the game, which is pretty much a Fire Saber. It doesn't seem that useful first, but its power makes it really worth it. I always use it on the final boss. I've always used it on the final boss, although I'll be changing that up this run. Plus, I just love Zero's voice when he does it. <laughs> it sounds like he's putting a lot of effort into it. And then you have that little laser section. Not too hard if you time your wall jumps correctly. And we're already at the boss. I love that. I love the before boss theme in this game for some reason. I don't know why. Ragnarok will awake the humans from their stupidity. It is the grand plan of our group under Commander Kraft. I am one of thine high jar warriors. Heat Genblum. I will defeat all who stand in our way. <laughs> Heat Genblum here is... Act well, for one thing, he reminds me of a uh, rainy turtleoid from X6. Which is not a good thing to be reminded of, mind you. <laughs> and I recommend... Actually, this is the first time that I actually use it, but... Uh, the... Elf, like I said before, is one of the only ways you can deal elemental damage. He likes to fly all over the place in the room and do a couple of melee attacks every now and then. First off, he has this laser, which is very hard for me to avoid for some reason. I don't think I've ever gone throughout this entire battle without getting hit. In fact, I don't know how anyone can go through the entire Zero series without getting hit. Then every now and then he'll put his head back in his shell and shoot fire out of it in a very tele telegraph pattern. And every now and then he'll also try to punch you, well, he'll face the other way, 
If he doesn't do anything with his fist, he's just picking you up. But if he puts fire on his fist, he's gonna do the Shoryuken. <laughs> I know that's not what it is, but that's pretty much what it does. And for some reason, he... Also, that punch has some real knockback to it. <laughs> Reminds me of Castlevania. Gra I failed to destroy my target. I'm sorry I failed you, Commander Croft. I just killed a turtle. Booyah. I think the audio may be a bit distinct. I can't tell. I may have to check in the... Uh, after commentating. Uh, it's either really slightly desynced, I can't really tell. I may have fixed it by the time... I may have fixed whatever happens by the time stuff comes to an end. <laughs> that is very strange. Anyway, now we're heading on to the next stage that I'm going to, which is... The Living City with Poplar Coca Petri. And uh, this is the hardest stage in the game, with, to me at least. This is the hardest stage to do when you have the le weather in the boss's favor. We'll get to why a little after halfway through the stage, though. You might notice how, we, how I usually do two stages per video, and that there are approximately 15 minutes left. Don't worry, this stage doesn't take up all of it, just a good majority of it. Also, I gotta say, I love this uh, stage theme. Now, if I remember correctly, the when the weather is not in your in the boss's favor, it's snowing, and all those spikes will be covered up, and a lot of the stuff that's gonna be happening in here won't be happening. Which I have to thank the which I have to thank Capcom for that at least, because uh, I played this game first on easy mode. Now we have this place, which th the rails actually, as I learned later in this recording, are kind of picky of when you should hold up. You have to do it right in the middle. Because if you're not touching the exact middle when you hold up, uh, you're not going to grab on, which is fairly annoying. Yeah, that seems like there's a desync. I should not even be talking about it. Now we get to the real pain in the ass thing about the stage. Moving blocks that if they crush you, as usual in a video game, will kill you instantly. This one's not too bad. I actually had a lot of trouble with this when I was first playing the game when I was a child, but uh, now I can do it no problem. It's a later section that I usually have trouble with, which I'm surprised I did so easily. Now, if the uh, weather is not in the boss's favor, these will not be moving whatsoever. Actually, I think as a kid, this was the only tr block in this section that gave me trouble because I couldn't just learn to be patient. And now we're at the mission completion for this stage, I believe. No, this, would this be it? Yeah, I guess it has to be. Because there are some missions I know for a fact you can only 100%. But what we have to do here is pull out all those little glowing things from the... Uh, tower. You can do that, it, you can, I believe you can do, attack them with a normal weapon, but uh, I just find it easier because... With, with the Z knuckle, because it pulls them out instantly. And this also has a branching path. Unlike, uh... Venery's st unlike the Wolf Ice Wolf stage last part though, I won't be showing the other path because there's nothing to get in it. Except for maybe a Ceratanium. And now we have those enemies, which th those big tube enemies. What they'll do is that they'll actually alternate between elements. Ice, fire, and electricity, I believe is the order, and depending if you destroy uh, one of them, you'll actually get an elemental shield. I and Which actually does hurt the element if you touch the, someone with it. However, I really have use for it. And uh, this little enemy does a uh, multi-buster, which is actually fairly useful if I remember correctly, but I never use it. I stick with the flame sword from the fight hells and uh, an axe later on. And now we get to the section that really makes me hate the stage when the boss has abundance in the boss's favor. Is that the first section that's too offensive? It's this one, because it can be annoying to time the jumps here. Somehow I'm able to do it really quickly, though, which surprised me, because I usually die there like six times. Which right now would be all of my lives. Actually, I forget if it's later that the Ceratanium, or earlier that the Ceratanium is, or if it's in here, because this is the room right before the boss. 
And also, make sure you're holding up to get onto these platforms, because otherwise... Oh, by the way, uh, extra life over here. Because otherwise, stuff is gonna go wrong for you, like there. <laughs> yeah, I think the Sartanium's right below me right now. But we're right before, uh, Gaka Yuck, yuck, I've been expecting you, Zero. You made a fool of me the last time we met. But I assure you it won't happen again. I am Kokapetri of the Einherjar warrior Warriors. Well, see Ragnarok through the end. Kya, kya. So you're the one who's in control of the security here? Kya, kya, surprised. It's all thanks to Lord Vile's virus program. It takes care of the intruders without even lifting a finger. So you're the type that can't do anything yourself. Kya, first grunt. Now this insult unforgivable. I'll turn you into a lawn ornament. And he's not joking either, because he's actually based off a of cockatrice. Every now and then he'll do an attack where he raises his wings and fires a blue laser. In fact, he just did it right there. Out of his chest. What that'll do is that it'll turn you to stone. Uh, turn you to stone. I believe you can escape it just by mashing the fuck out of the buttons. But otherwise, I believe you're like have double. You have like half defense when you're in it. I believe. He can be rather annoying to fight, but luckily he's easy either way. Can't. Why can't I move? I haven't been turned to stone, have I? No, it's fear keeping me frozen. Why did I take so long to read this text? <laughs> I think I was looking at the TV because I was watching Arrested Development when I was recording this. And thank god I almost never have to do his voice again aside from the obligatory boss rush. <sighs> that hurts my throat. And we got Poplar Cock Petri's EX skill, which is pretty much a uh, time stopper attack of some kind. I never really use it. And uh, Gamblum's attack was that sky attack that I love oh so much. And I am not an EG Edge boy. And we've actually destroyed half the Mavericks now, so it's time for a uh, mid stage, two mid stages of sorts. There are Reploids converging on Area Zero. Vile's Reploids are heading for the settlement. What? They found it? Fighting is breaking out across the settlement. The Reploids are advancing. Operator, transfer me to the settlement. Inputting coordinates. Zero, protect the settlement, please. Oh, before that, I'll save your data. Fourth wall breaking, just like Team Rocket. Repel for trouble. Just don't make it double. Data save, Zero. Be careful. Zero, ready for transfer? Transfer me. Alright, ready for transfer. Transfer. Zero. And actually, this is where we are also explained our mission for the day. Besides saving the people, by the way, I think that's a part of the Eurasia colony in the background. It's either that or one of the levels, that big missile. The big thing we have to do in this stage, in terms of getting the mission, 20, the 20 points for the mission, is putting out fires across the settlement. Well, we'll get to that later. Now, throughout this entire section, whatever is not land, everything underwater is bottomless pit. I'm not sure why Zero can't just swim, I'm, then again, he's a robot, he probably sinks like a rock. Then again, Vent, Ale, Grey, and Ash from the ZX games can go into water just fine. And mind you, Grey is a reploid. Everyone else is human. Wearing armor. But I'll get to that should I ever decide to do ZX. Yeah, there is some definite audio desync. What the hell? And also, this uh, stage theme is actually a remix of the normal, uh, uh, what's it called? Resistance Space and Settlement theme, which I actually really like. I think this entire game soundtrack is just kick ass, including the boss theme for the stage. I think this guy gives you a hammer, which is alright, I suppose. Now, there are two parts to this mission overall, actually. First off, what you're required to do is go into all these huts, or any place that has a door, really, and rescue a member of the settlement. Doing so just requires killing one variant, though, so it's not that bad. And these guys are all like, oh, we're saved by a replay, blah, 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 and I re-entered the door accidentally, no-ho. 
Ruin forever must restart the recording. <laughs> Now, one thing I didn't do is that by this point, you can actually, by the point you defeat uh, two Mavericks, you can actually go from the right of the resistance base to to the settlement, and you can actually get some recipes for uh, developing ch pa parts there, for developing body, head, and butt chips there. But it's since I already got what I need, I don't really need to do it. You can if you want, but I don't need it. And there's a refill of the water in case you need it, even though you can just use the instant off-screen respawn that every game has to do so. Mm, love that soundtrack. And uh, clearly there was some sort of really big battle because there's blade marks all over the place. Yeah, so what if you never ask for our help? What was I doing there? <laughs> and now, this is where I forget that I actually have saved everyone. I was just like, uh, I can't pass automatically, because I'm so used to games where if you... Because, well, I'm actually used to zero one. one Because this is actually the game I played the least, surprisingly. Yeah, everyone's okay, but I can't find Nate. Wonder if she's hiding somewhere. I'll check around. All right, but be careful. And who else buzz it but... Uh, Kraft Mac and Cheese. <laughs> she wasn't here either. Kraft! Eh? Yeah. Ah, Zero. I see, you are protecting Area Zero because of the settlement. You were a New York kid in Reploid. You used to fight for humanity. How could you fight for Lord Dr. Vile and attack the settlement? Lord Vile has all of the world's energy in his grasp. Humans and Reploids have no choice but to live under him. There are fools who don't understand that and fight us, even though they have no chance of victory. As long as you and the humans continue to fight, there will be casualties. And now we get Kraft and his amazing battle theme. Well, I love this theme so much. So good. But Kraft himself as a boss is actually really fun to fight. He has a lot of, he has a variety of different attacks, uh, he has this giant, fuck you, laser. Uh, he'll have that knife, which if he hits you with, he'll launch it as a missile and you'll get some extra damage. He has that bomb attack, which will go all across the screen and, uh, explode, of course. And then there's one which I never give him the opportunity to do because I kill him too fast. Which is, he'll send something in the air and it'll explode. He also shadow dash across the place every now and then. Really fun boss. That was three minutes, and then again, that was kind of a bad run. And I hope you like cutscenes, because that's what the rest of this part is. So this is the power of the legendary Reploid. I should have known. What's holding you back, Kraft? What are you talking about? You're not going all out. It's almost like you wanted to lose. There must be something else behind your attack. On the settlement. There is nothing else. Now, just as then, I am fighting for humanity. Area Zero and this settlement must be sacrificed for the greater good. Humans must learn the folly of defying Lord Vile. Why am I turning into a Scotsman? Stop it! Nage. Greater good? What are you doing to help humanity? How can you talk about the greater good after seeing what you've done to harm nature in this settlement? It took a long time for nature to return to its former state and glory for the humans living here to find peace. You're trampling humanity underfoot, not helping it. It doesn't matter how hard you try to justify your actions. You're both just fighting the same stupid war. Hippie. Nage, I should have known you were here. Craft, why do you follow Vile? When I first met you, you were a proud warrior. You said you'd bring peace to the world and protect humans. You promised me. Yes, I remember. And I'm keeping my promise by doing this. No, he's escaped. It's coming, Zero. I'm reading the Reploid sighting the growing fainter. You did it. CL, Kraft's got an age. Can you track his signal? What? I'll get right on it. 
So she, so she was friends with one of the New Arcadian Reploids. She pretended to be helping us this whole time. And you, you are the resistance Reploid to Reploid Zero. That's some legendary I'm old. Then to keep that other one talking about keeping humanity, but look at what he did to us, Elemental David. Don't I'm an old man. You gonna go help me? But that woman, she's with the Reploids. I'm not gonna stick my neck out for her. I, I can't believe you. You're just going to abandon her? She put her life on the line to stop the fight and save you and your settlement. What of it? If we save her, we might get attacked again. Look at you all cowering in fear. You're no different than the humans in the Arcadia. <laughs> How dare you? If you're going to be like that, why even put your lives at stake to leave New Arcadia in the first place? But, well... Zero. I found Nage. Get back here ASAP. I'll be right there. Whoa. Please, save Nage. Alright, little guy, that reminds me of Vance from Mega Man ZX for some reason looking at you. I don't know why he reminds me of him actually thinking about it. That's weird. And apparently Nage was ta taken to some enemy base west of the current position. It's actually more of around the lines of a prison. Their major craft are both there, so we're gonna have to do that later. But with that done, I'm gonna to end things off here. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time on Mega Man Zero Four, we're going to go rescue the lady. See you guys then. I love Craft. He's awesome. <laughs>